All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about how you can best leverage HackerRank to help you get that first job. Now, remember, there's three things you need. One, you've got to increase your skills so that you deserve the job and can do it when you get it. Two, you have to increase your credibility so people know you have the skills and will give you a chance. And three, you have to stay motivated long enough for the first two to work. So let's discuss how HackerRank can help you. And we'll start with the increase your skills part. So here is the home page of HackerRank. And you can see how it sort of organizes just by looking across the top. They have prepare, sounds pretty promising, certified, compete, career fair, and then you've got a profile over here on the right. We'll go through all of these, but let's start with prepare, which I found particularly useful in increasing skills and later in being able to show that I have the skills. So what does that look like? Well, within prepare, you've got categories here and topics. So clearly, you want to target in on Python first. Now, they've got others, algorithms, data structures, which are also useful but they're a lot more advanced than the Python. So I would suggest going through and answering all the Python questions. So let's take a look here. We're going to go in, and here you have it. You have a list of 115 questions. Now, what I found particularly helpful here was it was divided by subdomains. And rather than just answer random questions, which really feels demotivating because it's like, oh, when am I ever going to get done with this? I would pick a specific subdomain, let's say basic data types, and the challenge would be, hey, can I do all the problems within that subdomain? Now, if you notice, I am ranked number one. Of course, my ego wouldn't let me do anything but that. Now, to get there, how much work is that? Well, there are 115 questions. So, naturally, being a super geek, I made a spreadsheet. As I answered each of the questions, I kept track of where I was in the rankings, how many people that question helped me get in front of, because remember, I got to be number one, and so do you. And by the way, there are around 7,000 to 8,000 people that are in the number one ranking. But out of the two point something million that started down the path, there's really not a lot that made it all the way to the end. So it, it says something if you've got the intelligence and stick to itness to get through this. Now, as I went along, you could see, oh, you know, the first question, well, 444,000 people didn't get past that many points. And so I tracked it and I came up with some very interesting charts here. So here I track how many people I pass every time I answer a question. Now, some of the questions have more points, so they give you a big leap. But overall, you can see it's somewhere between 5% and 2% of the remaining people left that you pass every time you answer one of the questions. And so over time, this helped me stay motivated as I kept answering questions. I go, okay, well, I'm starting to move up the rank. You know, now I'm above a million. Now I'm in the top 100,000. Now I'm in the top 10,000. And that's important because otherwise it's easy and you can see a lot of people quit after each and every question and didn't go back and keep down the journey. Okay, let's look at a specific question that I went ahead and answered here. So here you're trying to basically prove that you can do if statements to check on various conditions. You know, maybe it's between a range or it's whether it's dividable by two or not and then print out different conditions. So they, you know, tell you what you need to do. They give you some sample input and tell you what the output should be. And then you go down here and you hit run code. And it will go through and tell you if you pass the cases. Now, if you fail something, you can unlock the uh, test case for some hackos. Now, you build up hackos as you uh, use this thing. I think I've got 2,500 hackos at the end of it. As long as you're not trying to get every test case and you're answering things successful, there really isn't a problem when you do run into something that you don't know how to do. And then when you're done, you hit submit code. It runs against all these test cases. 
And if you win, or if you do it correctly, you get the points, and they'll tell you that. Now, let me give you one hint right here. Do not leave a question if you don't get all the points right. If you do, you will never be able to get to the number one ranking. And if you forget which question it was, you'll it's, it's horrible. You have to go back and try to go, okay, did I get all the points on this question, this question? There are 115 of them. So if you do, leave, write down which question it is so you can go back. If your intention, which I say you should, is to get to the number one ranking. So that's my one tip because you cannot rank number one if you don't get all the points. And sometimes you don't get all the points if you solve something inefficiently and it times out or it runs too slow. They'll go, oh, that's, you know, 15 out of 20 points. Not good enough. Go back, do some studying, figure out how to do it. Now, how long did this take me? Well, I did it over the course of about a week and it took me 17 hours. And that was about uh, almost nine minutes of question. So start, you know, tracking your time. I mean, you're probably going to take a little bit longer. You don't have 20 years of experience of programming. That's okay. But then it, it helps you set realistic expectations of the amount of time you're going to have to put into it. Okay, that's how Hacker Rank can help you practice and increase your skills. Now let's move on to how does it increase your credibility? So currently, you can get certified. Now, pre previously, I had gotten certified in three levels of SQL, which I know SQL liked the back of my hand, so that was not any big deal. And then uh, also in Ruby. Now, here I just did my Python basic certificate. So, easy to pass. If you did all the questions, you will have no problem with this. They give you 120 minutes. I think it took me maybe 15. Maybe it takes you the whole time. It doesn't matter. It's two questions that if you are familiar with classes and how Python works, it shouldn't be a problem to pass this. And that gives you something uh, concrete that you can show. Plus, you can show off your ratings. So if I go back over to Python in there, well, I'm number one. Now, the thing I don't like about HackerRank is that if you go to your uh profile page you see the badges okay cool you can see that yes I'm a gold star in Python so that shows that I've, I've done quite a bit of work you can see your certificates which there the Ruby showed up I don't know why I didn't show on the other one here's the Python you do not see your ranking I think this is a mistake however you can screenshot it and put it on your resume and it you know depending on how many things you have there this can create part of of your credibility so that people will take you serious and know that you mean business. So fill out all the stuff over here so that if recruiters start looking for you through HackerRank, which I haven't had anyone reach out to me yet, but I would use it more as social proof as when I'm reaching out to people and applying for jobs. Now, what's the other way? You can go in these competitions. Now, some of them are very specific like uh, female college students, uh, college students. Some of them, like the Service Now one, is open to everyone uh, that lives in the Americas. So you can only do it if you're in North America or South America. Project Euler, it's available to everyone. I haven't tried any of these yet. I might do the Service Now one just to see what it's like, just to see you know how it works, and I'll make another video about it. Uh, the same uh, with Project Euler, since it's open full-time, I'm going to give it a try, see what it's like. Uh, I'm also currently working on getting ranked number one in problem solving, which includes algorithms and data structures. And I'm going to tell you now, I don't have a college degree in this. Probably most of you don't. So I'm finding this material a lot more challenging, which is why I would suggest starting with Python first to get your feet wet and build some initial credibility and momentum. Now, how does HackerRank help, help you stay motivated? Well, I would say the fact that you earn badges along the way, it helps some because you're at least seeing some visible progress. Leaderboard, I found very motivating. There is no way I could stop while I was ranked you know, number 560,000, <laughs> like my ego just won't let me do that. And, and hopefully, you know, you've got some of that fight in you 
and you're going to fight forward till you get to the number one spot, just like I did. Now, the other thing that I found motivating was the fact that you could do subdomains. So, you know, if it's 115 questions and you're slogging it through, that's too many, very demotivating. But just going, I'm going to do everything in strings, or I'm going to do everything in math. Plus, it kind of helps you uh, learn where your weaknesses might be. Like, I actually picked up a lot in regex, which is a huge subject. And every time I study it, I learn new techniques and things that I can use there to make it uh, more useful for me in my everyday projects. So that's it. That's how you can use HackerRank starting today. It's free. It's simple to use, and it's a no-brainer to get started. And as long as you stay motivated, you can get all the way through and then use it to show people that you know what you're doing. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Smash that like button so I can help more people. Subscribe if you hadn't, and I will see you in the next video.